Nora won a gold medal in table tennis at the inter-school competition. So she decides to throw a party at her place, for which she's invited her friends over. While planning the party, she realizes that her friends love apple juice. While Nora is busy making arrangements for her party, she gets a call from a troublemaker. He tells her that he secretly poisoned one of the nine apple juice bottles that Nora bought from the market earlier today. He loves being a party pooper. It could be either one of these nine. It's six in the evening now and the party is supposed to start at 7 p.m. She's in no mood to cancel the party. So Nora now just has an hour with her to find out which one of the nine apple juice bottles is poisoned. If she finds out which one is poisonous, she will have at least eight bottles to offer to her friends who love apple juice. Now because the troublemaker also likes playing games, he leaves a hint with Nora. He says that there are two mice, Alice and Bob, he's left behind in a cage. And each of them will die exactly half hour after consuming the poison. Yes, they will die even if they consume a drop of the apple juice, which is adulterated with the potent poison. He tells her that she can use the mice to find out which of the bottles is poisoned, but each mouse can be made to take a sip only once in every half hour. Now, here's the question for you. Is it possible for Nora to find that poison bottle with certainty within an hour only by sacrificing the two mice? If yes, how? If no, then what's the least number of mice she would need? Share your thoughts in the comment section below before you see the solution. Hey, this is Ganesh here from Don't Memorize. Before we get to the solution of this riddle, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you never miss a video from us. Okay, back to where we left off. Before we start discussing the solution, let me tell you that we are going to ask you guys a follow-up question at the end of this video. And that question is amazingly interesting. In fact, you could consider yourself to be a genius if you're able to answer the follow-up question. Okay, let's come back to our problem. How would you approach this problem if you were in Nora's place? Here's what many of us would think. One thing that all of us are sure about is that we are short on time. So giving each mouse a sip from just one bottle at a time won't solve Nora's problem at all. For instance, if at 6 p.m. Alice takes a sip from bottle 1 and Bob takes a sip from bottle 2 and both of them are alive at 6.30 p.m., then we will have seven bottles to test with two mice and half an hour remaining we will not be able to figure out which one is poisonous. Of course, if either Alice or Bob die at 6.30 p.m., then we will be able to say which one is poisonous. But that would be a fluke and we need to be certain. We need to think of a foolproof strategy that would help us find out which one is poisonous within an hour. And it could be any one of the nine. Now that we know that giving each mouse a sip from just one bottle does not work due to the time constraint we have, we can conclude that giving each mouse a sip from a mixture of apple juices from different bottles is the only way forward. Since we have nine bottles and two mice, some of us would divide nine bottles between them such that at 6 p.m. Alice takes a sip by mixing the apple juice from bottles one to four and Bob takes a sip by mixing the apple juice from bottles 5 to 9. With this, what could happen at 6.30 p.m.? Let's take an example. Suppose one of the first four bottles is poisoned, then Alice would die at 6.30 p.m., whereas Bob would survive. Because Alice dies, we could conclude that one of the first four bottles must be poisoned. Now we have four possibilities, just one mouse, with half an hour to go. With this, can we identify which bottle out of these four is poisoned with certainty? Not possible, right? It wouldn't have been possible even if Bob would have died at 6.30 p.m. 
because then we would have five bottles left, just one mouse and half an hour of time. So what else could we do? The next immediate solution that our brain thinks of is making smaller groups. Maybe groups of three? At 6 p.m., we could make Alice take a sip from the mixture of apple juice from the first three bottles and Bob take a sip from the next three. Would this approach help us identify the bottle that's poisoned? To simplify this, let's think of all the possibilities here at 6.30 p.m. Neither Alice nor Bob die, or only Alice dies and Bob stays alive, or maybe just Bob dies and Alice stays alive. These are the only three possibilities at 6.30 p.m. Now let's talk about the first case. If both are alive at 6.30 p.m., then it means one of the last three bottles is poisoned. Now we have another half an hour to find out exactly which bottle out of the three is poisoned. Possible? Of course. At 6.30 p.m., let Alice take a sip from bottle 7 and Bob take a sip from bottle 8. If Alice dies at 7 p.m., then bottle 7 is poisoned and if Bob dies at 7 p.m., then bottle 8 must be poisoned. And if both survive, then bottle 9 must be poisoned. So we managed to get the solution in the first case. But for the strategy to be foolproof, it should work in all possible cases. Let's move to the second case now. Only Alice dies at 6.30pm and Bob stays alive. This would mean that one of the first three bottles is poisoned. But we have one mouse left and three bottles to test in half an hour. Would it be possible to find the poison bottle now? It would be impossible with the conditions mentioned. And it's similar for the third case. So giving a sip from the mixture of three bottles to each mouse is not a foolproof strategy to find the poison bottle among the nine. So what should Nora do then? What approach should Nora use? One of the goals for Don't Memorize by creating such videos is to help you all with analytical thinking. Most often, our brain fails to come up with out-of-the-box ideas. The solution to Nora's problem is not rocket science. This problem can be solved using a simple concept of overlapping. Let's understand this using the following approach. At 6 p.m., let Alice take a sip from the mixture of apple juice from the first three bottles and let Bob take a sip from the mixture of apple juice from the third, fourth and the fifth bottle. How does this solve the problem? For that, we need to understand all the possible cases at 6.30 p.m. Both Alice and Bob could die, or only Alice could die, or only Bob could die, or maybe neither would die. These are the only four possibilities at 6.30 p.m. if we use this strategy. Look at the first case. What can we conclude with it? If both Alice as well as Bob die at 6.30 p.m., it has to be bottle 3 that's poisoned because that's the only bottle common to both the mixtures. Now we move on to the second case. If only Alice dies at 6.30 p.m., it means that either bottle 1 or bottle 2 is poisoned. After which, we can have Bob take a sip from either bottle 1 or bottle 2 at 6.30 p.m. If Bob takes a sip from bottle 1 and dies at 7 p.m., then it means that bottle 1 is poisoned. And if Bob survives after taking a sip from bottle 1, then it's certain that bottle 2 must be poisoned. So case 2 also works. What about case 3? Similarly, if only Bob dies after the first half hour, we can find out whether bottle 4 or bottle 5 is poisoned by having Alice take a sip from either bottle 4 or bottle 5. The first three cases work. But the fourth case is pretty interesting. What if both survive and are well and alive at 6.30 p.m.? It would mean that none of the first five bottles are poisoned. It has to be one of the last four bottles. Now we have half an hour, two mice left and four bottles to test. With this, can we certainly find out which of the four bottles is poisoned? And if yes, 
How? The answer is yes. We again use the concept of overlapping. At 6.30 p.m., we let Alice take a sip from a mixture of apple juice from bottles 6 and 7, while we let Bob take a sip from the mixture of apple juice from bottles 7 and 8. These are the four possible cases at 7 p.m. Now, if both Alice and Bob die, it means that bottle 7 is poisoned. But if Alice alone dies, we know for sure that bottle 6 is poisoned. And if only Bob dies, it means that bottle 8 must be poisoned. And if neither Alice nor Bob die at 7 p.m., then it's bottle 9 that's poisoned. So with this approach, Nora would be able to find the poisoned bottle after considering all the conditions mentioned. So can you solve this puzzle using any approach other than the one discussed in the video? Please do share your ideas in the comments section. Okay, now for the most interesting part, the follow-up question. The troublemaker calls Nora up after the party and asks her a challenging question. And please listen to this question well. He tells her that if he would have left three mice behind, what's the maximum number of bottles that Nora would have been able to order for the party, assuming one of the bottles is poisoned and she had one hour to find the poison bottle? Understand the question with complete focus. Nora now has three mice to sacrifice and an hour of time left before the party starts. What is the maximum number of bottles that Nora can order for the party, assuming one of them will be poisoned by the troublemaker? The conditions that the mice die exactly half hour after consuming the poison and that a mouse can take a sip every half hour only remain. Trying to solve this will be a lot of fun and we encourage you to leave your answers in the comment section below. Also, please share this video and challenge your friends and family. And of course, sharing the video will also help us get more outreach.